everybody today I just want to show you some GoPro stuff that I got for my bike bicycle that is but before I do I just want to apologize in advance if I sound kind of nasal I'm a little under the weather today so all right now that that's out of the way let's get to it this thing is becoming a pain this is the cheapy one that comes in just about every kit full of parts that you can get everywhere it sticks out too far it's a pain in the butt it doesn't get very tight i really don't like it especially if you want to mount this in some place tight that's close to spokes on a bicycle you, you just can't do it i mean it's it sticks out too much i wanted something smaller that i could mount into tighter spaces without worrying about getting this thing caught up in something so zip mounts a special thanks to another YouTuber, uh, Mick Bergsma, who did a really good video on these things, and I didn't even know about them until I saw that, so thanks for that. The zip mount package comes with three of these zip mounts. These are just a little square with a rubber back that you can take off and change orientation. You can see that it's curved on one side, so you can mount it to a bar in whatever orientation you want the GoPro mount to be. It comes with this pack of zip ties, and all you do to mount this thing somewhere is run a zip tie through it and zip it down it's that easy you can literally zip tie these things to anything you want as long as you have enough zip ties to go around whatever it is you can put this on anything so the versatility of these things is uh goes without saying i want to try these out today and see what they're all about next is one of the this is the gopro pro handlebar seat post pole mount <laughs> okay <laughs> dang it come on this kit comes with the mount, of course, which is a swivel type. Oh. This kit is a swivel type mount that comes with the mount, of course, and it has a rubber ring on the inside, and it comes with four more rubber rings that are sized for whatever kind of bar you want to put this thing on. It comes with a little carry bag, an Allen wrench, and the directions. This one was more expensive than a lot of other mounts out there, but I think it's worth it because, again, of the versatility of this. I want to permanently mount this on my handlebar and it's a swivel, so you can take your camera, mount it on this thing, and while it's on your bar, you can turn it, tip it however you want, and aim at whatever you want. And I like that idea because if you're out riding somewhere and you really don't wanna stop what you're doing but you see something cool, you can just turn your camera, look at it for a second, and get back to what you were doing. You don't have to aim the whole bike at whatever it is, you can just turn this guy wherever you want. Flip it around at yourself, do whatever you want to do. The way it adjusts is with these Allen screws, and it comes with this Allen wrench. You can put this on your handlebar or wherever you're putting it and tighten it down and it'll stay there. If you want to keep the camera in the same orientation, all you got to do is tighten it down and it'll stay right where you put it and it won't swivel anymore at all. You just tighten it down. Versatility. Oh God, that's like nails on a chalkboard. 3M silicone paste. Can you hear that? Nice and quiet. Sweet. Wow, that feels like a little miniature fluid head for a tripod. Cool. Next, for long trips, the eBoot Solar Charger. This is only about the size of a cell phone and it works awesome for GoPros. I was in the middle of a field doing a about a five hour time lapse with this not too long ago and it powered up the camera perfectly. At the end of it, the camera was still at 100% and this thing was only down by one bar. You can turn this on. It's fully charged right now. It's got a light on it. It has both micro USB and USB and it also has another USB on the side. To charge this, you just plug it into either side. It doesn't matter. It'll charge or it'll take solar power. Now the solar power on this thing, it doesn't charge this unit very quickly. It'll have to be in the sun all day long for it to actually charge this unit. What this is mainly meant for is to supplement the battery power you already have. As long as this thing has direct sunlight, it won't drain at all. It just basically keeps it at where it's at. The internal battery will last a very long time if you plug anything into it. That's why I brought this out for this video because if you're a backpacker or a camper or a cyclist, and you wanted to shoot some video on your bike for a long trip or something like that, 
It's got a carabiner on it. You can clip this to anything on a long ride and be able to power your electronics on your bike for a very long time, for probably all day. This thing's about the size of any smartphone, so pretty much any smartphone holder will work, or you can clip it to a bag or a pack or whatever you want to do. In fact, for size comparison, there's my phone. This is an HTC 10, and they're pretty close to the same size. This is actually a little bit smaller. So yeah, this is a great little backup power source to have if you can't plug in somewhere. In fact, on that note, it doesn't have to be in the sunlight. Bam, batteries are charging. You can take this little package, put it in a backpack, and go about your day while your batteries are charging. How cool is that? This Wasabi charger, by the way, works excellent. I have had this for a couple months now. It charges both the Wasabi batteries and the GoPro batteries, and I have not had a single issue with this thing well worth it. Lastly, the other piece that I want to bring on my bike trip just to try it out is this Black Boat Old Boat blah, blah, blah. Black Bolt Old Bolt <laughs> Black Bolt BA20 panning device. It's good for just motorized panning and time lapse. But but it makes noise and the camera's definitely going to pick that up. So be mindful if you use one of these things that your audio is pretty much going to be useless. But I just thought it would be pretty cool to bring it on the bike and get some sort of panning in motion type shot and see if it works. If it works, it works. If it don't, it don't. I'm just going to try it out. Oh, one more thing. I want to talk about this dive case really quick. When I bought my GoPro, the salesman went on and on and on and on about how waterproof this GoPro Hero 5 is and how tough it is and how much I didn't need this. He, he talked to me about 10 minutes trying to talk me out of this. Well, I got news for you, buddy. I'm sure glad I got this because if I didn't have this, you can see how banged up it is. This took a spill down the road at 45 miles an hour, and I did have it tethered. I just didn't have it tethered good enough. That's my fault. But this thing did its job. That's exactly why I bought this, was not to go deep sea diving. If I didn't have this, my camera would have been busted to crap. I mean, it's $50 to protect a $400 camera. Come on, this is a no-brainer. It saved my camera, no doubt. Now it is a gorgeous day outside, so I want to get outside and ride, so let's go.